Trust is the one thing that changes everything. Because when there's high trust, things go smoothly, quickly, wonderfully. When there's no trust or lack of trust or low trust, uh, bureaucracy sets in, uh, things happen very slowly, there's suspicion. Hello folks, welcome back to the newest podcast. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Bob Berg is joining us. Uh, he is a, a best-selling author, a speaker and co-author of uh, various books such as Go Giver and Go Giver Sell More and uh, Endless Referrals. So his book is sold over millions of copies across the world industry and he's training other entrepreneurs from the last 30 years. So Bob, thank you so much for being here on the newest podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So the first question is for people who don't know about the book or uh, who are just listening to this podcast for the first time, or maybe, you know, they're hearing from, the, uh, from you first time. Tell, tell us a little bit about your journey, you know, toward the Go-Giver series and how, uh, you know, did you, know, you started the Go-Giver uh, series itself? Well, uh, the journey began in broadcasting and then I moved from broadcasting into sales and really learned and studied sales, uh, became sales manager of a company. Uh, uh, a few years after I began, and eventually uh, started teaching others, you know, what had been working for me based on what I had learned, and um, uh, it, it sort of morphed into a speaking career. Uh, then I, I wrote my first book, which was Endless Referrals, but way, way back in the 90s, and um, uh, it was really a book for entrepreneurs and salespeople who knew they had a great product or service, they knew it added wonderful value to others, but they weren't necessarily uh, confident enough to go out into their local communities and build the kinds of relationships with others that would result in people doing business with them both directly and, and through referrals. So Endless Referrals was really a system for doing that. And I define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles, the key being predictability. If by doing A, uh, it's been proven that you'll get the desired results of B, then you know that all you need to do is A and continue to do A, and eventually you'll get the desired results of, of B. That's what Endless Referrals was, but it was a, a, you know, a traditional how-to book. Uh, but I'd always read and been fascinated by parables, business parables, which are stories. Uh, usually short stories and they're, they're intended to make a point and, and, and teach, but teach through story. And I think, you know, we all basically know that stories tend to connect on a deeper level uh, with the reader. And I, I know whenever I'd read parables, uh, I always felt a connection to the author, a connection to the characters, uh, and a connection to the message. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could take the basic premise of endless referrals that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust and uh, turn it into a parable. So uh, I asked my, my good friend, John David Mann, who was editor in chief of a magazine I used to write for, I asked if he would be the lead writer and storyteller because he's a great storyteller. I'm, I'm much more of a how-to guy. And uh, if he would collaborate uh, with me on that, and fortunately he said yes, and that's when we came out with The Go-Giver. Can you give us uh, the principle of the book, which is one of the five principles you explain in a story, and that story was fascinating, you know, the way the character started, and he started you know, finding his mentor. Sure, sure, and the basic premise of The Go-Giver is that shifting your focus, which is really where it all begins, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's actually the most financially profitable way as well. And not, you know, not for any particularly magical reasons or mystical reasons, or, you know, it really makes logical sense when you think about it, because when you are that person who can take your focus off of yourself and place it onto helping others. 
looking to discover what they want, what they need, what they desire. When you can take your focus off yourself and help them on solving and overcoming their challenges and their problems and getting closer to, to happiness, uh, people feel good about you. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They often want to do business with you. They certainly want to tell others about you. So it actually is very logical and rational as in, in terms of why that shift in focus is so important. And as you said, there are five laws that, that, uh, that come from this, this premise. And those laws are the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. Yeah. You were saying that we cannot focus on the money. Uh, before that, we must focus on bringing the value because what we bring value, based on that only we are going to get the money. Sure. So can you explain in that context, uh, I mean, why it's very important to add value in the marketplace and then expect the money in return? Yeah, well, and, and it's a great question and it really... Uh, let's explore it just a little bit. You know, we look at the difference between price and value. Price is a dollar figure, a dollar amount, or it's whatever the currency happens to be. It's that's that's what price is. Um, value, on the other hand, is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, this service, this concept, this idea, what have you, that brings so much worth to an, or value to another human being that they will willingly exchange their, their money for this value and be glad they did while you make a very healthy profit, okay? So we have to realize that value is always in the eyes of the beholder. It's what they believe to be a value. And nobody is going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet or because you need the money or because you would like them to buy or even because you're a really nice person. They're going to buy from you only because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so. Well, that's actually good news because it means the entrepreneur or salespeople who can, again, move from an I focus or me focus to a focus on them of bringing value to them, giving them what they want, what they need, what they desire. Well, that's the salesperson who they're going to buy from. Okay. They're not going to buy from you. If, if your focus is on the money that you're going to take from them, they're not buying. Okay. Uh, they're going to sense that the chances are they're going to understand that they're not buying. When you take your focus off yourself and you place the place it on bringing immense value to their lives, you're building that trust and you've earned the right to that, that sale. And they're willingly exchange their money for something they believe is going to benefit them more than the money they're exchanging it for. So we say focus on the value, okay? Understanding that money is simply an echo of value. Money is an echo of value. It's the thunder, if you will, to values lightning, which means nothing more than that the value comes first, okay? That must be the focus. The value comes first. The money you receive is simply a natural result of the value that you've provided. For salespeople who are just starting uh, into the industry, what kind of tactics or techniques they can use to sell their product or services? Well, I, I think more than the tactics or techniques, I think it's really understanding the principles involved. Because once we understand the principles, now we can go into strategies and tactics, if you will, and, and, and so forth. And, and I think it's first understanding what sales really is at its most basic level. So many people believe that sales is about trying to convince a person to buy something, whether they want it or need it, okay? And that's not sales. That's really, it's called being a con artist. And, and that's not something that anyone should ever want it to be, okay? So sales, by definition, is simply discovering what the other person does want, does need, does desire, and helping them to get it. 
So what is the basic essence of sales? Well, you know, the old English root of the word sell was salan, which, which literally meant to give. So when you're selling, you're literally giving. Now, uh, what are you giving when you're selling? Well, I would say that you're giving time, attention, counsel, education, empathy, and most of all, you're giving exceptional value to another person. Once you learn, once you understand that that's what selling is all about, now you can start studying the strategies and the techniques and, and all the different things that come with it that allow you to more effectively communicate uh, your message. But it always needs to be congruent with the needs and wants and desires of the, of the customer. The first thing I would say is start learning how to really truly discover what that other person needs. Now, basically, if you're working a niche market, you tend to have a good idea of what your, your prospective customers or clients need because you're working the same market and, uh, and uh, you know, the same types of business. So you have the general idea. Yet, everybody's still an individual. Everybody's different. In different things, different solutions, different ideas, different concepts hold different value to different people. So we've got to always understand that, that the key is discovering that person's needs, wants, and desires. So learn how to ask the questions, the right questions that are more likely to bring that out and then be willing to listen, to really listen. Next, understand that even when you're listening, because as human beings, we come from different belief systems and we hear things and we understand things differently, that it's important to be able to clarify what they've answered and what they've said, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to make sure that what they meant is what you heard, okay? So we need to be able to humbly and gently ask, you know, Mr. Prospect or Ms. Prospect, just for my own clarification, or just to make sure I'm understanding you correctly, or I want to make sure I really understand, you know, what it is. How would you describe, you know, and dig deeper and deeper until we really, truly, you know, understand what it is they, they mean. Uh, and then, you know, I think the other key as a salesperson is to, again, take your focus off yourself and recognize that it's always about them that they're gonna do things for their reasons, not your reasons. So you've got to be able to tie in their, you know, their reasons to your product or service. Yes. So, you know, you talk about uh, the entrepreneurial spirit, but what about those who aren't entrepreneurs? Uh, does this go-giver principle still apply to them? Sure, well, that's a wonderful question because, you know, what we know that with an entrepreneur who basically owns his or her own company, that they need to be able to have customers and cultivate customers and that end person is the customer, who, right? But in a, a, when you work within another company or corporation, your customer may not be the end user. It may be your supervisor or it may be your colleagues, or it might be the people you lead in your division. It might be the big, you know, the, the, the big person, uh, you know, the big boss who owns the whole company. And maybe it is the end customer or maybe not, depending upon what you do. The key is this, you don't have to be an entrepreneur for this, these principles to apply, but you need to be entrepreneurial. In other words, or what we would call in, instead of an entrepreneur, we would call an intrapreneur. And that's an entrepreneur within someone else's organization. What it means is this. It's understanding that just as we said, no one's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet or need the money. Understand that nobody's going to hire you and pay you a salary because you have a mortgage payment to meet or a rent payment or you need the money or you want to to whatever it is you want to do. They're going to hire you and they're going to keep paying you because they believe you're bringing immense value to the company. So if you want to place yourself in a position where you're irreplaceable or where you're getting raises or advancement or what have you, you've got to find ways to keep creating value for those you serve. Yes. So I'm not getting a lot of value from the small talks, but these are very powerful. These are like more than reading any books or you know, listening something. 
so let's talk about the mentorship uh, what is the best way to uh, get any mentor i think it's reaching out to someone in a humble way uh i i wouldn't reach out to someone and just say hey will you be my mentor <laughs> because the chances are if you want that person as a mentor so do a lot of people and just and everybody asks will you be my mentor it doesn't distinguish you in any way but if you were to say to a person i know you're very busy and if this is something you either don't have the time to do or just would rather not do for any reason i'll totally understand i'm wondering if i might be able to ask you one or two very specific questions okay and when you ask that you've done a couple of things first you've separated you you've distinguished yourself from everyone else who just asks hey can i pick your brain or can i can i uh um you know really it's can i take up a whole lot of your time <laughs> right even though you don't even know me right <laughs> you're not saying that but that's what it what it's implying but you're not doing that okay you're and you're you're also letting this person know you're giving them an out or back door you're saying hey if it's you know if you know you're too busy or if you I'll I'll totally understand they're much more likely to feel very comfortable with you when you do that because they know you respect their time. So when you say that, you know, when you say I know you're very busy if this is something you do, they know, you know, they're very safe with you. They know you. And then when you say uh may I ask you, you know, if I could ask you what could I possibly ask you one or two very specific questions, well, this now says to them first, again, they're not going to waste my time with a whole bunch of nonsense questions. They have one or two questions and they know what they need to ask. So they yeah. see you as a person who's very worthy of taking their, you know, uh, of spending some time with taking their time with. And they'll usually say, no, not always, but usually they'll say, sure, you know, what how can I help you? What can I do for you? Now, you want to ask those one or two questions and make make sure you research them first the person so that you don't ask any questions that you could have found out online but but you know you'll ask them a couple of these questions and they'll help you and so forth and then you want to make sure you don't take up much of their time uh that very day make sure you write them a personalized handwritten thank you note just thanking them for the wisdom they shared and the time they took out of their busy schedule that you know that I look forward to applying the information and if I may I'll I'll circle back with you to let you know how things are coming along best regard that right what I would also do that day is I would uh send a small charitable donation and it doesn't have to be anything big but just a a charitable no a small charitable donation to their favorite charity or organization do it in their name they'll be notified of that and you're doing it only so that they know that you respect the process and that even though you're not in a position to to give value to them as they are to you that you are making an effort okay and then you know again when you when you call or email or what have you a few weeks later just to check back maybe you have another question and Uh, you know eventually a mentor protege relationship starts to form now it may or it may not it might be that was going to be your only conversation with them it might be you have a couple of conversations with them and that's it it might be you you meet someone else and someone else you may never have that one ongoing mentor or you might right we don't know so we can't be attached to the result but when we approach people that way who we would like to have mentor us we're much more likely to have the result that we desire yes one last question uh, mr bob it's been really you know nice talking to you and this thing uh what is the top uh, i think one advice you would give to people who are just starting uh, their business and in addition to that what are your top five book you recommend them to read the people well, who are just starting their business I mean the you know the the greatest piece of advice I would give and this was given to me it's not something I've made up and that's just understanding that trust is going to be your most valuable commodity. So to the degree that that you are able to earn people's trust that's the degree that you'll be successful. And trust as as Stephen M R Covey son of Dr. Stephen Covey of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People wrote in his great book The Speed of Trust trust is the one thing that changes everything because when there's high trust things go smoothly quickly wonderfully 
when there's no trust or lack of trust or low trust, uh, bureaucracy sets in, uh, things happen very slowly, there's suspicion, right? So to the degree that you're able to build trust, and trust is a matter of character. You know, it, you're, it, what you have to give, you offer least of all through what you say, although what you say is also very important. We need to be able to speak pe to people correctly, kindly, tactfully, honestly, what have you. So, so what you say is important, but it's the least important. Uh, more important is, of course, what you do, but most important is who you are. And who you are is where character comes into play. When you're that person who is that type of person who others trust, now your influence is really at a stratospheric level. So I would say make sure that everything you do is based on high character and is bound to elicit trust from others. As far as books I recommend, well, The Speed of Trust is certainly a great book. That, that is one I would recommend. I'd recommend Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd recommend uh, Harry Brown's uh, wonderful book, The Secret of Selling Anything. Uh, I would recommend uh, a book written in 19... Uh, I think it was 1907, I believe, uh, titled um, uh, Peace, Power, and Plenty by uh, a man named Orison Sweat Marden. Uh, and another great book, this was written in 1910, uh, is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. So I would say those five books are, are five I would recommend to everyone. Yeah. And people who are listening to this podcast or watching this, if you haven't read The Go-Giver, first you should go and uh, get thanks. this book, Go-Giver, because this is Jim. The moment, because when I read that book, it literally changed my paradigm, the way I was thinking about the business and everything. So guys, if you're listening to this podcast, I am going to link uh, Mr. Bob Instagram handle and his website in the link. You go and find the link. And I'm also going to the, uh, put the link of Amazon where you can able to find the book. Go and read and do give us a favor, uh, tag Mr. Bob on Instagram while you're reading the book, your top five learning so that, you know, we can see that what kind of lessons you have learned through this podcast. And that way you can able to add something to Mr. Bob uh, and his book. Thank you so much again, Mr. Bob, uh, for being here on your podcast. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, let me up with a bright smile on now. I'm